In this video, we are going to set up a finite element eigenmode simulation for a silicon strip webguide within the device design environment using the Theme Solver. We have already opened up device and are going to start with a blank project. The simulation workflow is similar to the other device solvers and starts with the material definition. Adding a material to the object tree can be done in more than one way. For example, we can open up the optical material database, select the material of interest, for example silicon here, and click on the create button to create a copy of this material in the object tree. Let's close the window. We can also add a new material to the object tree first by clicking on the new material button and then right clicking on it to add optical properties. This will open up the optical material database and we can select the model we want to use. For example, let's select the silicon dioxide material model and click select. Rename the material object to silicon dioxide glass palette the materials are now ready to be used in our simulation. The next step is to build the geometry of the device under investigation. To do this, we will first add a rectangle to the object's tree from the structure section in the design tab and edit its properties. Set the name to WG for waveguide and the X span to 0.5 micron. Set the Z min to 0 and Z max to 0.22 micron. In the material tab, set the material to silicon. Add a second rectangle to the object's tree to model the oxide cladding surrounding the silicon waveguide and edit its properties. Set the name to oxide, the X span to 3 micron, and the Z span to 3 micron as well. In the materials tab, set the material to silicon dioxide and the mesh order to 5. Note that a higher mesh order means that in the regions where the oxide will overlap with the silicon waveguide, the silicon waveguide will have priority. In the graphical rendering tab, set the value of alpha to 0.1 so that the oxide object will be transparent and we can easily see the silicon waveguide inside it. With the geometry defined, the next step in the workflow is to define the simulation region. All device project files have a simulation region in the objects tree by default. If necessary, we can also add more simulation regions by clicking on the region button in the tabbed tool strip. In this demo, we are going to modify the default simulation region according to our need. Go to the property editor and set the dimension to 2D Y normal. Keep all the boundaries to closed, which means that the simulation volume is going to be defined by the size of this simulation region object. Set the geometry with X span equal to 2.5 micron and Z span equal to 2.5 micron. We are now ready to add the solver object. Click on the theme button in the tabbed tool strip to add the solver to the object tree. Note that as soon as the solver object gets added, a new tab containing all the necessary simulation objects for that particular solver appears in the tabbed tool strip. Open up the property editor for the solver and note that the simulation region has already been set to the default simulation region object in the object tree. If there is only one simulation region object available, then the solvers automatically select it. However, if there are multiple simulation regions present, then care must be taken to ensure that the right one has been selected in the solver properties. In the Mesh tab, set the edges per wavelength to 2 and polynomial order to 3. Enable the Refine based on Material Properties option so that the solver will use the effective wavelength of light inside each material during meshing. In the Model Analysis tab, set the Sweep parameter to Wavelength and the wavelength value to 1.55 micron. Keep the number of trial modes to 20, search near N, and use the use max index option. This way, the solver will look for modes near the maximum index value in the system, which would be the index value of silicon at 1.55 micron in this case. We can now check out the partition volume by clicking on the partition button. The partition volume mode shows the entire simulation volume and identifies the different domains and surfaces. Each domain and surface have a unique identifier and they are listed under the simulation region in the object tree. As you select different domains and surfaces in the object tree, the corresponding volume or surface gets highlighted in the partition volume. In the object tree, you can also see the material of each domain listed on the right. We will now add the boundary conditions to our simulation region. The external boundaries should all be set to PEC. We can do this by adding a PEC boundary condition to the object tree from the tabbed toolbar. Now edit the property of the boundary condition and set the surface type to simulation region. Select the Xmin, Xmax, Zmin and Zmax boundaries to apply the PEC boundary condition at these boundaries. 
Note that the corresponding boundaries now get highlighted in the partition volume mode when the PEC boundary condition object is selected. The default boundary condition for the mode simulation region is also PEC, so if no boundary condition is defined, they will automatically be set to PEC boundary condition. Finally, we will add a mesh constraint which will allow us to refine the mesh in specific domains or surfaces inside the simulation region. In this simulation, we will refine the mesh on the outer surface of the silicon waveguide. To do this, click on the constraint button in the tabbed toolbar and edit the properties. Set the maximum edge length to 0.01 micron so that element edges on the surface of the silicon waveguide will be either smaller than or equal to 10 nanometer. In the geometry tab, set the geometry type to surface, surface type to solid. Select the waveguide geometry as the solid and close the window. Note that the partition volume again highlights the location where the constraint will get applied. The simulation setup is now complete. Save the file and name it soi underscore wg.ldev. In the following units, we will see how to run this simulation and analyze the results.